bags are packed are you ready to go this time tomorrow we'll be on the road riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other everyone. Welcome back to Children of Verte. We are so excited to have you here with us today. Um, let's start with Adam. Who who we got today? Who's helping We've us out? We've got our incredible returning sponsors, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. They have supplied an Electrum chest code that you can pick up on the overlay or bouncing around in Twitch chat. Thank you, Idol Champions <laughs> of the Forgotten Realms. We also have Die Hard Dice. And listen, we're out of alphabet now uh, from the list <laughs> that was supplied. Do with and so, um, you know, honestly, I'm going to try to crowdsource this one a little bit today. So anybody else in the cast that has oh. a uh, any kind of word that I'm putting everybody on the spot. I mean, it, it's it's wild to think that any of us could improv. I know that it's hard to believe. <laughs> I, I, I got one. I got one. Oh, okay, oh, okay, oh, oh pass one. Chance collectors. I chance like it. Chance collectors. So Die yeah. Hard has That's a seat. with chance collectors. <laughs> and uh, you can grab 10% off an order at Die Hard Dice with the code Erte. And you can also uh, potentially win a gift card that uh, also pay attention to chat for the, all the prompts around that. And we also have Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane. We have so many things going on. It is so, so, so busy right now, but I love it. We're working on very, very fun things. So check out everything at Demiplane.com. We're going to have a big year here in 23. So uh, lots of uh, very fun stuff coming along very nicely. And I am playing Silas Sorrell, your dimensionally displaced magical super fan. Got it right on the first try. Time to flex. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me over the interwebs as Alicia Marie Body, and I am a costumer and creative artist and role play enthusiast. I am always making costumes and doing things and a lot of things are NDA'd, but the good thing is I can share it at the end and that's what it's really all about anyway. Tonight I am playing your six foot four. No, I mean, yeah, she's, that's right. She's six foot four. Six foot four, attorney at law, Furs Armstrong. I just realized I'm embarrassing myself because I don't have my dice. Don't move. <laughs> Not moving. Oh, no. Please, no. Got him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. And I remembered today, Alicia. Yay! <gasps> oh yeah! Whoa! Yay! Thank you so much. I love it. it. So I remembered. Good. I am your chaos coordinator. Awesome. It's funny. Yeah, that has a like... title too. Yay! I love it's it. It's funny because um, I was going to get it in a lighter color, but then my sister was like, I was talking to my sister, and she goes, yeah. hey, Didn't you say your DM has a two year old? And I was like, Yeah. She goes, Black. <laughs> <laughs> I make the mistake of merit wearing light colors far too often. <laughs> and so for some reason, I'm always making like pasta with tomato sauce as well. Like, why does that happen? Ooh, I have a very good. cute video of, of my nibbling okay. uh, with dinner on top of their head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yesterday. It's adorable. And Close also, to the mouth. that washing machine must get quite the workout. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyone with children period mm -hmm. well, I, I was gonna yep. say under five but no period mm -hmm. uh there's yep. washing machines yeah um hello i am jed kretschmer uh i do all sorts of things um involving storytelling uh you can find my work and me on the interwebs as at dreamwisp you can find me streaming as dreamwisp jen um don't think of too many other things to talk about right now so tonight i will be playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker Maeve morgan flynn 
Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on the interwebs as Obo Lauren. And so last week I asked for help finding a tagline for my character. And uh, we did have a couple suggestions. And so <laughs> if you do have a suggestion, go ahead and make sure you leave comments places. This one actually comes from YouTube from Chris, who suggested Carolyn Neb Stern, starry-eyed shapeshifter extraordinaire. Oh, I like. Ooh. It should be alphabetical, though. Shouldn't we need an A, B, C for Neb, right? Well, we 26 yeah. taglines. <laughs> I, need, I, I need 25 more, everybody. Okay, get on it. Thank you. That's a good idea. <laughs> Astral everybody. adaptable. Yeah. Astral <laughs> adaptable. Something. I don't know. Astral adapter. <laughs> Astral adapter. <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> um, hi everybody, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. Um, I oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. Well, I again? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Hope. Welcome. <laughs> I'm just listening to everybody else's intros. I wasn't thinking about anything. Um, <laughs> uh, come check out a show that I dungeon master on Wednesdays called Fantastic Kings and Where to Find Them. We're on our third episode. It's uh, really exciting. Everybody's having a really good time. Um, it's on the That's How We Roll channel, and it's really great. Thank you so much. And tonight I am playing Miss Robin Beckett, your granny for hire. Yay! Um, and I am Deborah Ann Wool. I am your chaos coordinator for the evening. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I will it. take. We need we need ABCs of that as well. Probably mm -hmm. <laughs> we need a game master ABCs. Um, okay. You can find me on the internet as well. Although I'm almost never there now, but <laughs> but it's at my name, so there are things there, and maybe someday I'll log back in. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> enjoying my break. Um, so yeah, uh, and here we are with another episode, another chapter of Children of Erte. This is chapter 34. So thank you to Josh. Thank you to my players, everyone at home. Thank you for being here. And let's dive into the 34th chapter of Children of Erte. So if we remember from last week, uh, the five of you had spent a very eventful night sort of growing and changing, <laughs> like, like that book <laughs> told us what happened in fifth grade. And uh, you pulled into Blackwater Bay Station, uh, which had a very helpful signpost and basically laid out a bunch of lovely quest threads for you, you could pick and choose from. Uh, you made your way down the cliffside by literally jumping off the edge, uh, but it worked out okay. Uh, you turned on a <laughs> underwater sea lab uh, and got a boat going and made your way across the frozen Pacific Ocean. Uh, and had just kind of moored yourself by the top hatch of this diver's gondola, which you had read about on the signpost. So here you are, the water is choppy. You know, this storm might not be overhead for another, you know, number of hours, another 20 hours or so, but that doesn't mean that the fringes of it aren't really starting to nip at this water. It is, these waves are really, you know, bopping you up and down. Um, it's hard to kind of catch that rope onto the cable that you're trying to, uh, the buoy that you're trying to attach to. Um, but you can see now, again, kind of bobbing up and down in this water, there is a hatch attached to what looks like a sort of a mini sub <laughs> iron lung, maybe, uh, that is floating, you know, just below the water. Um, the waves are crashing a bit over the top of this hatch, but it's accessible and seems to be buoyed held in place by a cable that just disappears into the depths below you. And we see, we see this, we see oh, the yeah. cable bobbing, we see, okay. <clears throat> it's just a metal box in the ocean that will take you down. And we did have somewhere to tie off the boat. Yes, there's a buoy and there's, okay. you know, same thing you can see and, and easily attach yourself pretty securely. And well, there's a little light. I'll say there's a little light blinking on that buoy as well as uh -huh. on this, you know, diver's gondola that sort of alerts you to know that you have indeed turned the power on. Neb is going to take a long look at all the clouds and the waves and say, well, if we do this, we either need to do this really fast or we're committing to being down there for a while because I don't want to come back up when the storm is going. Well, also the key is going to disappear in like an hour or two so what and it sounds like we don't have much choice no yeah. 
I'm just saying that the last time I did this with a coffee pot, it faded away. I think it was about two hours. No wonder I'm so tired. So wait, if you make believe coffee, if you created the coffee pot, did you create the coffee that was in the coffee pot, or did we just use it to brew coffee we had and? Did we no. drink coffee that now doesn't exist anymore? I, 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 I don't know how all the science behind it works. You know, but okay. I'm just, I'm just saying that the pot, the empty pot, I think that Maeve had most of it, but uh, the pot was empty and the pot just kind of you know faded away, kind of similar to how it faded in. Um, and so I am just saying, that um, you know, I'm trying. Like when I made this key, I was like, okay, last forever. But I'm not sure if the laws of magic are listening to me like 100% of the time. Silas, what do you mean it just fades away? What do you what mean we talk about this once we go down below? I, I'm with Maeve because the key's going to disappear. Is waiting up here yeah. for the storm to take us, unless that's what everyone's <laughs> feeling today. No, I think. Okay. I think right. shipwrecks, storm, storm aisle somewhere, or whale watching. But no, I think I think we're all super excited about getting under the water. I'm I'm not excited about getting back in the water unless I'm a seal. Uh, I'm gonna look over and what does the hatch need to open to the sub? It just sort of turns, you know, like a submarine hatch would. It would spin, and you should be able to pull it up like the like the top hatch of a submarine. Does it, it have? numbers engraved on the top <laughs> it does not is there Anything? a desmond inside waiting for us <laughs> no you're not in limbo slash hell slash hell. <laughs> good know, good are know. you just telling us that to only have it be the truth in the finale <laughs> I, I will believe uh feroza i believe yes. this is made for you <clears throat> it looks kind of heavy I'm just aware that we're going somewhere and we have no idea what's down there. Well, I mean, we have Again. some idea because... It's it's a... Hab what did they call it? It's the burp. It's the underwater know. research program. It's a habitat exploration and research. It's pressurized. So it's been designed. Yeah. It descends along to the moon pool to access the yeah. habitat. So at least there's a pool for swimming, which you need yeah. in the middle of the ocean. Beruza, just think of it like we're going to the aquarium. I think we're going to the opposite right. of the aquarium, right? Like yeah. the aquarium is a bunch of a bunch of water and things in glass boxes that then you walk by, but now we're gonna be in the glass box in the water. Oh, so I think so it's like it's like at the safari when, when everybody gets into the cage and then it's like every all the animals are on the outside, but then the humans are in the cage and that's the way it should be, you know? That's the best yeah. way to do a safari. I'll try not and to take that personally. Feruza? All right. I'm not even All thinking right. about the fact that the power's been out for a while and maybe those cages are electric or whatever and everything's <laughs> down there waiting for us. I'm not even going to think about it. I want a ton of electricity in water, normally. Mm -hmm. just going to roll up her sleeves. Okay. <laughs> Go over. <clears throat> Hands on. All right. So... To access this thing, you'll have to stand on this buoy. Um, it's got a little platform and you can kind of, you know, attach, you know, sort of wriggle yourself in and make sure you've got a good fitting. But in order to do reach the hatch and open it, you sort yeah. of stand on this platform that's attached to the buoy. So as you step off onto that big yeah. wave, just sort of rocks you up as you have a hand on it, you're okay, but it is a ride. Um, reaching down, getting one hand, and another hand on the other side of that hatch. Please give me a strength check. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Let's see what my bonus is with that. Okay. It can be athletics for you if you'd like. Oh! It's a natural 20. Ah, so yes! <laughs> I knew we picked the right person Finally. for the and job. And then a giant officer shows up and tries to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sweat. Um, so yeah, you reach down. It's like butter, right? Even though it looks kind of rusty and like the salt has been sort of eating away at it, you move that thing, it barely squeaks as you turn and turn and turn, finally lifting up. This one does creak a little bit. It is heavy, this hatch. It sort of clangs open and you look inside 
It is a fairly small hole, a little bit smaller than a manhole that you'd see on a city street. And below that is dark. All you see are a few blinking lights and what appears to be a fairly small space. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's dark down there, but um, Bruce is just going to Can I reach in up. my pack and pull out a glow stick? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Mm-hmm. Here you are. Thank you. Drop it in? Yeah. She's, okay. she's just going to drop it in. <laughs> For Rosie, you drop the glow stick down. <laughs> uh, it clatters onto the ground. You can see that in a, in a, in a circle are a bunch of seats. Um, you know, sort of all sort of facing each other. And up along the sides are a bunch of arrays of different um, dials and barometers and different, you know, gauges that are sort of showing all kinds of different measurements. Um, There's a number of levers and switches, uh, quite a lot of kind of complex um, uh, uh, array dashboard here. Um, There are also some portholes that sort of look out into the dark seawater. Okay, she's going to relay this to the crew and say, I mean, we don't have any time to waste, so I guess we should just get down. But first, she's just going to lean over and go, hello? Hello, 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 hello. Echoes back up at you a little bit. She's going to look back at everyone. Silas, (laughs) why are you making that face? I'm just saying that, like, honestly, if I was a monster lying in wait to ambush someone, if somebody yelled, hello really really loud i don't think that i would break my you know ambush routine to answer them before they jump down in front of me i mean that's all i was thinking but it was a passing fleeting thought and i think that we probably should go down there because we've jumped down into worse already in the last few days a big wave rocks this platform listening to them talk about it i'm gonna go ahead and hop onto the platform yeah Mm-hmm. It get a big wave rocks it. You're all, you know, you have handholds, so you're holding on to things, mm-hmm. but you know, everything and then splashes. You can feel some of your clothes beginning to get a little bit wet in this frigid air as you stand on this sort of precarious platform in the middle of the rolling ocean. Um, cool. Robin and I just finally go. got dry. Let's get on in there before we get wet again. Get on the hatch. All right. <sighs> Bruce is gonna go down first, give a look right. at everyone that and go start going down. Bruza, you find some handholds. There's actually like a little sort of bladder that kind of holds onto the side that allows you to drop in. It is tight, especially for you. This thing is maybe, maybe six feet tall. Your head is still poking out a little bit as you get your feet down at the bottom. And as you, you know, scrunch down into a squat to sit, you can tell you can all fit here, but your knees are going to knock right up against each other. This is a tight little circle that you are going to cram yourselves <laughs> into together. She's gonna, yeah, you take her head up and go, it is, it's small in here. And it, it, we're basically gonna be like a little, like little tomb of the five of us. So come on down. And she's gonna move over. Bruce's head disappears beneath <laughs> the waves into this dark hole in the ocean. She mm-hmm. had to say well, tomb. the term tomb is encouraging. Mm-hmm. And I'll start climbing down. <laughs> Maeve <laughs> crawls in afterward. Maybe, you know, you're also fairly tall yourself. And, and again, you're going to have to you kind of fold yourself in thirds uh, to be able to kind of get into a seat here. Um, and, you know, sitting very close to Feruza or, you know, having to really jam yourselves in. But again, you know, the main thing you notice is just all of these little blinking lights from all of the different buttons and dials. And again, the kind of dark, bubbly water just outside the portholes. Can I identify what any of the blinking lights do or are tied sure. To? Most of them are labeled. Um, you see mm-hmm. things like atmospheres. You see things like O2 versus nitrogen versus uh, H2O versus all kinds of things. You see something that uh, will tell you is telling you you think the wind velocity and wave height of the current conditions at the surface. Um, a whole bunch of different things. You also see uh, a bunch of controls, levers, things that say auto, manual, down, up, things like that. Um, all sort of little blinking gauges and lights on that dashboard. I'll go I next, and when I get, Ooh, yeah, go when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna look around and say, "This is why I always wanted to go to space camp." <laughs> it definitely, to definitely feels like sure. space. Um, in fact, you'll remember from your your studying of uh, of your space camp brochures that you never actually got to go, but that uh, while that is outer space, many people consider the ocean inner space. So mm-hmm. Have a lot of. Sympathy. 
All right, Neb, you fit probably the most comfortably of the group, uh, but still, you know, scrunched up next to your, your fellow adventurers. All right, get cozy. <laughs> Silas Robin. Miss Miss Robin, you can go ahead because I'm just gonna come in like a wrecking ball at the end here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I'll go in. All right. Big wave rocks. You hold on. Again, sort of guiding yourself slowly. You have to maneuver your hips a little bit, your ample, ample having lived life kind of hips through <laughs> that manhole cover, uh, finding yourself a seat down below. Uh, it is cozy. You're already <laughs> all starting to feel a little bit uh, claustrophobic in here. Faces are, you know, just inches from each other as you uh, settle in. Silas. Down the hatch and he <laughs> just <laughs> tries to squeeze through. Yeah. All right, Silas's, you know, large Air Jordan sneaker <laughs> slide past your faces as he makes his way down this little ladder and kind of maneuvers himself, squeezing down. Uh, I mean, you all barely can fit your butts in a circle around, you know, this space mm -hmm. here. Um, all there is left to do up there is close the hatch. I'm going to do it as all I'm right. coming down. And then Silas is just going to kind of mutter under his breath. I, I, Really am glad that we've had significant bathing experiences more recently than last time. <laughs> Silas, using all the strength you've got, pull that up. It's a little easier once it tips because gravity, boom, slams it down on top of you. You can see inside there is another, uh, you know, turning mechanism. You give that a good spin as best you can. You also notice that next to it, there is a button that says pressurize. So do you think we should hit this pressurized button? That'd be wise. I guess. You Did died. we see it the nice. Yes, he's, he's, he, he okay. closed it, yes. Uh, pressurized, you all feel the whole thing kind of shake a little bit, and there's a sound. Um, when that does all sound from outside, the waves, the little bit of rumble of thunder from far off, any of the bird calls, all of that is silent. Suddenly. This is like a sensory deprivation tank. You can hear each other so eerie. breathing. It's like a bathosphere, right? It's a it's like mm -hmm. a round globe kind of thing. Kind of. It's it's more, or is it more, more like of a diving bell. More okay. of like an iron lung. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. So it's more like uh, shaped like the Challenger than than a yes. Like it's Alvin not kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's memory and biology. No, no it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, forgive me on this. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, no, this is this is more like being in an iron lung. Um, oh, mm -hmm. It is. It, attached to this cable um, uh, that's, you know, attached along the side that will guide it mm -hmm. as it descends. Um, so yes, looking around, um, you all start to see, you know, uh, the, the dials and gauges and levers, all of these lights really come into focus. Now that it's pressurized, it's like the whole uh, diver's gondola seems to know that it's ready. Um, yeah. A lot of different things sort of light up. The first thing you see is a lever that you can go one direction to turn it to auto or another to turn it to manual. You see a second lever that will go down or up. And then you see two gauges, one that shows uh, ATMs, which you believe are atmospheres, and feet. Uh, right now you are at zero feet, which is sea level, and one atmosphere. Do um, I remember anything from all the stuff that we read upstairs in the, the science shack? There was all the manuals and everything and all yes. everything that we looked at. Do I remember anything about operating this mm -hmm. craft? Sure. Give me an investigation check, please. You can do it advantaged. Sure. Let's see what we get. Ooh, that is a 23. 23. Um, you're pretty sure that the manual settings for these things are only for emergencies. That really, on auto, this thing should be able to function. So if you were to put it on auto, auto and then say down, it would likely handle your descent for you. Well, I think we hope that there's not an emergency and we put this thing on autopilot. Yeah, I think that's the way um, to do it. I'll go ahead and crank to autopilot auto. and go down. And crank to down. Go. As you do, uh, again, 
you hear these large sort of mechanical sounds to it. You know, in this day and age, we're so used to computers, but these kinds of machines are still very mechanical. There's, you know, computer components, but there's big, heavy iron moving parts, not unlike the steam locomotive that you've been traveling in. Um, as it does, suddenly you feel a rock and it begins to slide down. You can see the bubbles going by in the window outside. Uh, those of you who can see the cable from outside and the, the portholes near you can begin to see um, a, uh, you know, the, the cable sort of getting darker and darker as the water gets, you know, deeper and deeper. Um, it's not going very fast, but about Ooh, let's say five, a little less than five minutes, maybe three or four minutes coming down, it comes to a stop. And you see a, a large button on the side that says pressurize, begin to flash. Uh, is that bad? Uh, like, <laughs> do, do I, I mean, know? I think, I think this is the transport between the, sur the surface and the, 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 the burp. <laughs> Oh, so we have, to burp. we have this to burp our, on a regular this is basis. Our taxi. And so then once we get there. Do we, we think we got there in four minutes? Or I this is know. just the point where we have to burp and keep going. Mm -hmm. It may be that yeah. we have to pressurize okay. as we go. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, as long as people are like, you know, kind, they're like, oh, flashing light, you should, you know, touch this. But we've already kind of proven that Steve or whoever made that mine. Like, again, masochists we're, we're dealing with here. So. Yeah, but scientists made this and they would do things logically. And I'm going to press the button. You press the button. Yeah. All right. Again, you begin to hear some noises. It takes a while, but you begin to start to feel pressure in your ears. You know, and definitely having that feeling of wanting to like move your throat muscles and, and pop your ears a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you even notice as, as you carry on a little bit of conversation, your voices maybe are just a little bit of a tin higher, just the tiniest little bit, a little bit up there. Uh, it takes a little while, but as you watch the gauges, you can see that it now says 33 feet, 1.75 atmospheres. Once it reaches that point, it begins to descend again. Now the water's getting quite a bit darker. It takes another about four minutes. Now you can see the habitat just outside the window. This is a big iron <laughs> lung at the bottom of the ocean here. It is bolted to the bottom of the sea. It does have uh, quite a few portholes. Off on the other side, you think you could see a much larger section that has more sort of glass or plastic, you know, submarine glass that would be, you know, along the other side for observation. But here on the shore side, it's pretty spare. Um, this thing does come down. It stops right outside the kind of back section, back third of this uh, thing. You also notice two large cylinders a little ways off, and you can see running along the ground some cables that are attached to the habitat that then go all the way back into the darkness in the direction of shore. When you get here, you yet again see the flashing pressurized button go off. We're supposed well, to go deeper than this? At least a, a little bit more. Maybe this is the point in where we burp to be able to get into the burp. And I'll press the button. Uh, I right. mean, Neb, like generally this is working out for us so far, but I do just want to take you know, a little bit uh, <laughs> argue with that scientist comment because the scientists <laughs> who made the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, the scientists are the ones that made, like, you know, Frankenstein's monster. I mean, like, scientists make some really, really bad stuff. Scientists like, in like, all of the true. media that you have that you've uh, read <laughs> and looked at, absolutely. Real life scientists have yet to do a lot of those things, so. <laughs> that you know else. of. That I know of, that's true. I mean, I'd argue that even the fictional dinosaurs were made by scientists in Jurassic Park, so they did some good that you enjoy. Regardless. Yeah, you're the one who wants a dinosaur. I can't you argue with the their logic, thing? but... <laughs> I have pressed the button. Science! Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> As you all are talking, after <laughs> Nevis pressed this button, again, it takes it another few minutes. You really are here for a good five more minutes before anything happens. It's less noticeable, but you do, again, feel a little pressure on your ears. Uh, you know, maybe you're feeling a little itchy, your skin feels a little dry, 
a little funny. Um, you know, if you should try to whistle, that would be really hard to do. You couldn't quite get a whistle sound coming. Um, looking at the gauges, Neb, you notice that you are now at 68 feet below sea level and at 2.6 atmospheres, the light goes off. There's a and a big sign over the side that says airlock now begins to flash. It's just a sign, it's not a button? Button, sorry, button. Yes, oh, okay. flashing button. Lots of flashing buttons. Mm, blinking and beeping and flashing. Blinking and, and beeping thinking. and yeah. flashing. Well, and flashing. <laughs> well, thinking, oh. using what you said about like logic here, like the button flashing would mean do something to it, right? Yeah, I mean, but still, I mean, this is an airlock now. Like this is like the the execution of choice of every science fiction villain of all time. I, I, I'm just saying, like this seems like it's this has a little bit more weight. It's also the way you get into it. things, and I just hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> the sound of air uh, and a uh, and you can see the hatch up above uh, has you know sort of sucked upward a little bit. Uh, it is still sealed. Okay but you do feel like there's been a little change in the atmosphere and the air here. What? Do, I, do I see any other blinking, beeping, or flashing lights you do or not. buttons? Do we see anything at the windows? The, at the windows, you just see the stanchions of this habitat. You know, you are down at the bottom of the ocean, uh, you know, right next to, almost underneath this other sort of section of the, uh, of the habitat. The well, airlock sounded like it connected up top. It did. Well, all the stuff that we found on the surface said mm -hmm. that doing the manual thing would basically take care of everything. So I think we made it. Feruza? I mean, this entire no. way, though, everything's been flashing to tell us what to hit. And then we get down here now and nothing's flashing to say, open the door. Well, it'd be hard to make the door flash. <laughs> it did. I, I mean, never mind. Feruza's going to stand up. <laughs> Roll her sleeves again and okay. You <laughs> this as one... she's doing this, Silas uh, just kind of weaves a little illusion. Uh -huh. to have like a little button on the door start flashing. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me feel better. Makes you feel better. All right, uh, Perusa, you are now again working against gravity, unlike <laughs> unlike uh -huh. Silas, who will need an athletics or strength check from you. So that's me. Okay, so let's do let's do athletics because I have a good okay. bonus there. Go for it. Needed thirteen. All right. You're able to turn the thing. Luckily, no water immediately comes spilling in on you. As you push, open it about six inches. Oh, finally, it does kind of move over. Um, and you are looking up into a box. It has a dim light up at the top. You can see kind of a, a graded platform uh, above mm -hmm. you. Um, as you are tall enough to stick your head out, you can quite literally see that this is a wet porch. So it is a grate. There is seawater underneath it. Uh, this is a pressurized environment, so it holds the water out, almost as if okay. this was sea level. Uh, off to one side, you can see what is the moon pool. So there is a lowered grate that connects directly outside of this habitat. Um, you can literally put on your scuba gear and step in the water and swim right out into the open ocean from that moon pool. Okay. Uh, you see, do see a bunch of scuba gear hanging up on the wall across the way. There are tanks, there are wetsuits, there are regulators, a um, bunch of dive computers. There's everything you would need to go on a scuba diving expedition sort of housed in this area. There is an airlock over to the left that has, you know, a button at the top for airlock open and close. Um, and over to the right, there is a shower. Fruz is literally li listing everything <laughs> off that you just said to everybody. <laughs> She's just like, if, I, I guess we're here and we have no time. So <laughs> Fruz is going to get on the ladder oh. and start climbing, climbing up into right. the, yeah, into the platform. Feruza, you climb on up. Uh, you know, the ceilings here, again, are about six feet tall. So you're a little having to hunch to mm. to be in this space. Um, but yeah, it's, it, is, it is breathable air. You can feel 
you know, it, there's that little extra bit of pressure, but you feel pretty used to it. You do feel like this, you know, sort of staged pressurization as you came down has really, yeah. you know, made this transition pretty easy. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, you are standing above ocean water. You look down, you can see fish swimming below you. This is wild, you guys. Get up here. I mean, there's nobody here. There's nothing in here but scuba, do scuba gear. I will Come scramble on, on up. Yeah. <laughs> Neb, you climb on up. You see all of this. It has a, a strong salt smell in the air here. And it's cold. It's quite chilly. Mm. It's cold. I will also climb up. All right. Maybe. Yeah, Silas is last because it's almost like he has to unfold a little bit. It's like yeah. on an airplane. You know? <laughs> so, Robin, you can mm -hmm. make your way, followed by Silas. Robin, check it out. Scuba gear for when we actually want to do the scuba that you can teach us how to do. Could have been oh, useful up there. Exciting. <laughs> hmm. If I was a shard, where would I be? Think. <laughs> well, let's survey the moon base. No moon moon base? pool. <laughs> moon pool. The base. The burp. Let's survey the burp. See what we can find. Okay. And I, I mean, at that point, I think we'll come to a decision about whether we can do this quickly or we're stuck here for a while. Hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there wherever the worst, most dangerous place is, that's where the shark's going to be. <laughs> is there gonna? Is there like a? So we have the moon pool, mm -hmm. and is is there another way to go to other? Yes, there's the door? airlock that okay. right now is sealed that would then head into what you think is the rest of the habitat. Okay. I suppose we'll go this way first. So wait, how does an airlock work? Like, so it's sealed right now. If we undo it, is that going to mess things up out here? Well, I mean, I've never actually been in one of these things. <laughs> Usually an airlock is like the, the connection point between two different places. And so I'm going to walk up to the door. Is there a window in the door? There is not a window in the door, no. Okay. I would think there'd be a door here and then there'll be a little space and then there'll be another door. So like, you know, like we had to stop with the... The That's submarine right. and pressure eyes will be I doing I saw that on For All Mankind. I, I know it <laughs> yeah. now. I'm, I'm with you now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with scuba diving. We open pretty it. much anything underwater. You hit the, but... hit the airlock button? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is Silas it flashing? The button. <laughs> As oh. It's not flashing. Okay. <laughs> Silas hits the button. It's it's right above on the top of the door. Um, you know, again, this is a fairly you know tight squat little space, so pretty much all of you can reach it. Um, as you do, you hear a little again, sort of air hiss a little bit as you push that door open. There is not a change in pressure. Um, looking at it now, it feels more like if there was a breach on either side, this would maybe just hold back water. This would just be a way to create some safety spaces between the two. Um, as you open it up and look through, on your left is a door. It says the head. Uh, next to that is a uh, small counter that has a microwave underneath it, an electric kettle on top. On the right wow. is a counter with some lab equipment and some cabinets. And further on, you see another airlock down the hall and a bunch of bunks. There are three on either side. They are tightly stacked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you see a small living quarters. Sorry, so there's uh, the counter with the kettle and the microwave, and there was a counter with instruments or? Scientific equipment. So microscopes, mm -hmm. petri dishes, uh, you know, the centrifugal spinners, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. things like that, chemicals, regents, things like that. Yeah. I'm immediately going to walk over to the bunks. Yes. I'm going to start looking through the bunks because so, the last time we had to look through bunks, that's where we found <laughs> yes. the clues. So let's check under start. the mattresses. Always check yes. under the mattresses. So they are, they are made military corners. These are excellently <laughs> made beds uh, that you immediately begin to destroy. So give me I, some investigation checks. From I, I feel kind of bad uh, unsheeting these things. Uh, I would love if you would give me that. You got uh, it. Roll it plus five, please. Thank you. Ooh. All right. Um, these have been excellently cleaned. Clearly, the people that were here before you, um, they did a, you know, this, they were closing up for the winter, right? Like they knew they weren't coming back for quite a while. And so these have been really stripped clean. Well, we're going to have clean places to sleep 
if we decide to stay. Robin is, uh, you said there was like a kettle. She's looking yes, to make a, make a cuppa. Like to... oh, fantastic. Cool. There's awesome. there's a small sink uh, over mm -hmm. by the uh, the lab equipment. You can fill the electric kettle. There is no stove. Literally, there's a microwave and an electric kettle. Um, as you fill that up with water, <laughs> you can hear kind of a <laughs> as the water kind of clearly there's pressure being used to push okay. the water out uh, into this kettle. Uh, but you place it on the stand, click the button, mm. lights up. Might as well make us feel like we're at home, you know? Yeah. And that's not going to disappear in an hour. <laughs> Sorry, Silas. <laughs> Don't remind me. Hey, listen, that's fine, but I just want to say, like, I do not feel like I'm at home right now. Like, <laughs> I know what you're trying to do there, but this does not feel like home. <laughs> what can we do to make you feel more at home, Silas? Um, Get out of here as quickly as possible. <laughs> Perhaps. Silas is also probably bent over and like oh, his yeah. shoulders probably pretty much match up with the sides. I mean, this is a this is a stationary submarine. This was not made for husky folks. <laughs> or, or those of you exploring the bunks also notice that each bunk has its own little personal porthole to look out. Oh, I'm oh. looking out every single porthole. What do I see? Is there any is it like, oh, these are the prime places to get a view out into the ocean? Or is it just, well, these were the bunks no, are, these, that's these where the- pr pretty small. They, you know, they give you a limited view, but you do maybe see a fish swim by every once in a while. Um, you know, you can see as you sort of look out and see some schools of fish, they are being pulled pretty intensely by different currents and wave patterns. Mm. You can only imagine sort of what's starting to brew above you. Mm. Well, I mean, the one- no, go ahead, Ned. What did you say? I was just going to say, I think the more I think about it, the more I think we're going to mm -hmm. be here a while. I think if we rush through this, we're just going to have to come back. I don't know. It's, uh, the storm is coming. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that is comforting is that people did stay down here for an extended period of time doing research. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Robin, did you find anything edible in that kitchen? Or just I'll take a look around. You start opening cabinets. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are chemicals and things like that <laughs> that are clearly for the lab equipment. But you do find quite a number of boxes of MREs, meals ready oh. to eat, freeze dried, the kind of stuff that you know long distance hikers and astronauts uh, would eat. Uh, basically, all that they require is hot water or a microwave. <laughs> to cook on up. Um, there are also things like tea bags and instant coffee and sugar and powdered creamer, uh, anything that will last. Um, you know, you do notice that down here, you know, you can feel it's a little musty. Yeah. <laughs> There's probably not a lot you can do with exhaling so much uh, into mm -hmm. this space. Um, clearly it's trying to do what it can to take the carbon dioxide out of the water, but that moisture is gonna be even harder. Mm. So it's a humid environment, but it is warmer. You you do feel like this area has some kind of heat mm -hmm. being pumped in. And it's well lit, right? Even though it's dark outside. It's yes, just, it's, it's lit. It's lit. It, the, the, the ocean around you mm -hmm. is, is pretty dark. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's lights across the top. They're not very flattering. You know, they're pretty, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fluorescent <laughs> mm -hmm. shadow <laughs> producing lights. <Yeah>. But... <laughs> All right, well, while Miss Robin is making tea, mm -hmm. I'm going to open the door to the head. Uh, start open the, the door bathroom, to the head. why not? You got it. It is a small chemical toilet. Uh, there is toilet paper. Um, <laughs> it is very, very small and not soundproof. You're pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is not a super private space, um, but it doesn't have a smell or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, all there is that. In case you miss, there is a, there is another airlock back by the bunks. Oh, let's check them all. Let's check the next one. Yeah, it has a button. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there was nothing under the bunks, right? Under the mattresses. Uh, do you want to do your own specific check for that? Go ahead. Sure. And, and and quick question as that's going on. Um, so the airlock that we came through. Uh huh. There was another door that we came through after that. No, there's just the air. Well, the airlock that you, there was an airlock to get from the diver's gondola into the wet porch. Yep. Then there was a second airlock to get from the wet porch into this living area. 
And then that's the one that you had mentioned probably seemed like it was for safety for safety basically to did, did we close that you have not yet no everyone? okay but per, perhaps before <laughs> we explore further we should close that airlock just in case do we want to close our hatch too yeah you've closed nothing yet we've closed nothing i believe the idea with airlocks is you close you open a door you go out of it you close the door behind you, you so it. that if there's ever either in space or in deep water where the pressure will affect things and it'll collapse in you won't lose everything you'll just lose the one area <laughs> yeah okay no, we should right. go back and close everything yeah let's okay. let's close the um, hatch and right. this last airlock before we open this other one so as okay. you guys go and close those hatches, Maeve, you're mm -hmm. looking under the mattresses. What did you? Throw? Uh, 14. A 14. Um, as you go underneath and start looking, uh, you do find a few little things, nothing in great note like a bobby pin, like something that people might have missed. You find a nickel, um, uh, maybe a little bit of like uh, an eraser, you know, nub, uh, <laughs> uh, sort of lost under there, little things. So there's definitely evidence of this having been used and, and lived in, um, but it's not really useful things was well cleaned. you'd be surprised bobby yes. pins nickels erasers <laughs> macgyver yourself a battery <laughs> I don't know if anyone call. could it would be jen, jen speaking here i literally, literally yeah. believe i have those all within arm's reach because <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you use them to open the battery thing on the keyboard hey. or, mm -hmm. and, yeah. mm -hmm. useful i love it yep we have props um, is, uh, so there was a door near the bunks. Is yes. there also a door near the where the lab area was? No. So okay. between the little kitchen lab area and the bunk area, those are just open shared space. So we, we haven't looked at the lab closely yet, though? Not yet. Um, I mean, uh, that's where uh, Robin found the food. Okay. Um, oh, so okay. there are also, you know, the, all those cabinets and things are housing both uh, scientific chemicals and <laughs> so so this is this is a pretty small space it is it is quite small yeah. you guys are lined up single file squeezing <laughs> past each other to get to things it's it's kind of remarkable that there are six bunks and that six people would ever be in here okay. at the same time i have heard stories about the people who get onto the space shuttle about they have to learn how to be in real 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 close close quarters so this They're is probably like this. the same mm. yep yeah Probably why I'll never go to space. That's why. I mean, no offense to anyone. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> tight spaces. Eh. Yeah. I mean, Silas, considering how this adventure has been going so far, don't count anything out. Uh, <laughs> well. uh, and right, if all the doors you, are closed, I'll close the other door. hatches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's just close everything uh, up. As yeah. you go up and you hit the airlock button above that farthest door, uh, again, you hear a as it seems to sort of release its seal. All right. You push it open. Yep. All right. As well, you push it open, quite a large space presents itself. There's a couple of steps to step down into what is essentially a sphere, a large sphere. Um, it is, as much as it can be, glass, submarine glass, so that you get quite a good observant view of the ocean around you, some above, some below, around to the sides. Um, there are a number of chairs to sit in with those like side desks that come up around so that you can sit and, and view and take notes. Um, there are, you know, charts of currents and glaciers and, uh, you know, rates of, of um, melting and things like that from the Arctic all up around the walls. This is, you know, this is some hardcore, cool science stuff happening here. Wow. I think we'll see something like a big whale or a shark or something under here. Probably a giant so. octopus snapping the top off a jar or whatever we were talking about earlier. I mean, now that I'm not food for a giant octopus, I would love to see one. Yeah. Yeah, this is really kind of, but we see nothing, just fish, right? Just flying by. Just... No, as you're is looking this... out right now, um, off to the left, sort of that l most sort of side, you have almost a 270 degree view. You know, not not quite, but you're you're really kind of getting there. You've got quite a bit of a, a range to see here. So way off over on the left, you can see what is a huge kelp for, forest. 
um, just kelp that could be, I mean, they could be 50 feet long for all your look. They, they disappear from sight up into the, the top. Um, you can see that it is teeming with life. Um, there are fish darting in and out, crabs crawling around on the bottom. The whole thing sways back and forth like one of those crazy used car sale guys. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Um, got excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, waving back and forth um, <clears throat> uh, in this space. It's really quite beautiful, kind of the dance of it within sort of the current and the flow of the waves. Um, straight out in front of you, dark, endless ocean. Um, it's still light out and the storm isn't fully overhead, so you are getting some light filtering down from the surface, but it is it gets dark pretty quickly out that direction. Yeah. As you move over to the right and begin to look off in that direction, way off the very farthest of your view you do think you see some shadows of something off in that direction you think those are whales? are we all in a little ball right now like we're all we standing want in the them ball to come towards us because like i can flash lights probably or do we want to leave them alone for right now? or Before is it the do. shadow of the ship could be could be is it from the storm um does this look like is this a bathosphere does this look like it detaches from the station it does not no okay. it looks very solidly observation stuck. deck yes. not observation <laughs> pod exactly yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. as much as i love the idea of making you guys float around in a, in a golf ball under the water yeah. i mean that's what some of the deep sea submersibles look like so that's why yeah. i wanted to check yeah, yeah. yeah. this like, is a going, stationary are we going in a giant hamster ball into the deep ocean mm. um next adventure are there notes anywhere yes. about what they were studying uh yeah you want to give me hmm I think this might be, let's do investigation. We'll go ahead and do investigation. Can I help her with this? Yeah. By saying, y you take that side, I'll take this side? Do you wanna, do you wanna give her, give her, what's your nature bonus? Uh, mm. My nature is a plus three. Plus three. Let's add that. Let's say you're, you're helping because these are, you know, nature. -y my nature is not as good as my investigation. <laughs> That's what I figured. Uh, so you yeah, do your oh. nature and we'll add Neb's, uh, no, sorry, you do your investigation and we'll add Neb's nature. So you guys can okay, decipher I, it together. I'm a dirty 20. Dirty so 20. All right, plus three. Plus three, three is 23. 23, nice. Right. So yeah, you're looking, you definitely think they are studying, primarily interested in that kelp forest. Um, it seems to be rich with biodiversity. Um, it is really sustaining the ecosystem in this area. And, and they have noted some much larger animals coming to this area, again, because of the sort of rich you know, prey and things like that that are available here mm -hmm. and the nutrients in the water from that um, forest. Um, you also can tell that they are definitely looking at climate change and rates of, you know, melting glaciers and how that's affecting mm -hmm. the, the biodiversity in this area. So that seems to be the main focus of study for this particular habitat. Are there any names or dates? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, from a couple of months ago, a few months ago, they probably left. It's December now. They probably left in like October ish mm -hmm. sort of time. So they've been gone just a few months. Um, you do see some names. Uh, I'll tell you now, they're not super important for your quest, but you know, uh, they're I write down the names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're scribbly, <laughs> doctory kind of names that are hard to decipher. Uh, you know, um, but no, they're not names that you recognize or anything okay. like that. Um, mm. uh, you can see a number of different prestigious scientific universities are involved. This is a cooperative, you know, for them. Um, so the main thing you get out of that is you do know that this is also a teaching facility. So uh, mm. students would be invited to come here and learn and um, sort of become the next generation of marine biologists. So this wasn't part of the tour. We yeah, effectively I... broke the law. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You broke oh, into yeah. it. Oh, yeah. We're very worried about that right now. I mean, <laughs> what is the law in this magic land? We make the law. You know what? You're right. If we got back to wherever the shore is and there was someone waiting to arrest us, we'd probably be happy. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'd be happy. But but you make a good point. I'm going to grab the notebook. You would be notebook. happy to see another person yes. who's not yes. us. Yeah, but Just if they're here to arrest us, that would be kind of anticlimactic, don't you think? Eh. I'm going to grab my notebook. Off. Don't worry. And I'm very quickly going to uh, 
write a note and I'm gonna say, dear, all those names that yes. may found. Dear doctors. Doctors. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. We had a um, great thank time. you. Thank you for letting us <laughs> crash at your place. Uh, sorry we didn't give you advanced warning. Thanks. And then I will sign Neb, but she'll do the thing where she signs it as messily as possible. So it's almost impossible to read what she wrote. Ooh, great. Just It's just a. Brrr, and then we'll <laughs> attach that somewhere, like if there's a, a chalkboard or something or a blackboard yeah. where she can just pin it on up. Yeah, I remember we drank the... your tea and <laughs> <laughs> made it messed Friday up your bed. I remember the last time we left a note for someone that did they they didn't like it. No, but they Wait, also when got... did that happen? <laughs> that was like our very first stylus. Yeah, but they were also getting spooked by us being not corporeal. Whatever was going on with us, this time they'll just find a note. They won't find us. Oh, hopefully. I remember that now. Yeah. Hey, Is there another? Two, real quick, this is important. Two questions as you're looking through all that. Number one, did it say where the giant octopus was? Um, did their notes ooh. say that? Let's do. Let's do a more specific. We'll do. Let's do a, an investigation check specifically for that. Uh, and can I help again with the nature? Yes, with your nature, we'll add a plus three. Uh, so that's, that's very generous. Going to be with with the nature, it's mm -hmm. going to be a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Ooh. You do see some references to giant octopus. Um, okay. They say it comes by at night, very briefly. Um, it seems attracted to. Oh, is that? A... Should I give that to you in a dirty? I'm going to give it to you in a dirty. Oh, um, so dirty. It seems attracted to uh, phytoplankton. Um, so whenever the sort of the phytoplankton in the area is sort of heavy concentration is when they at those evenings, they tended to see it come by more often. Um, so they have been tracking it. They did see it once in October. They saw it like two weeks before that, but then not a month before that. But there does seem to be at least one that is frequenting the area every mm -hmm. so often. There you go, Silas. We'll stay up tonight and we'll see if we can see a giant octopus. So we just need to find the fighter plankton and then we're like, fine? I, I think that's what those are over there. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. So we've got that identified. Number two question, possibly more important. Did it say anything about any kind of prehistoric dinosaur type creatures? In this <laughs> I mean, I think that's what giant yes, octopus are, right? Strangely enough, it does. What does it say? Uh, it says that uh the depths of the sea have uh i can't read this scientific name here but they talk oh. about that this it's ancient and uh might be related to i can't read the rest of this but something asaurus i'm Ooh. looking over mave's shoulder and whatever she's pointing at i'm still just gonna nod and say oh yeah <laughs> I'm, and, I'm completely making this up nothing oh, no, 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 it's just yeah. scribbles. <laughs> i mean i might even be scribbling it like slide of uh, hand it as we're yeah. talking yeah i mean Th Neb, this got so much more helped. exciting <laughs> but yeah Neb will, will help with this deception because she helped you do the research and be like oh yeah and, uh, we might be able to see one of one of these uh asauruses whatever the the thing is tonight with the giant octopus uh, 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 okay all right <laughs> let's make sure that we're ready by the fighter plankton it's a taliosaurus i think the what source taliosaurus it's one i hadn't heard of i've never heard of a taliosaurus must be what they were researching i know a lot about dinosaurs and i've never heard of a taliosaurus but this is an entirely new like dimension or world or planet. I don't know where we actually are. So I think it's plausible. I mean, like you said earlier, scientists like make things and, and, and do do good most of the time. So if they're saying Ooh. that there's a Taliosaurus, mm -hmm. then I, I'm here yeah. for it. I mean, if you find it, you, maybe you can use your name in the scientific naming. Ooh, you get to do that. Silasaurus. Yeah, just Silasaurus. 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 Yes. Silasaurus. That welcome. actually has a nice ring to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Is there is there an exit from this place? <laughs> well, I just oh, I, I didn't oh, back into the bunks area. Okay, so this okay. is the end of the habitat. Yes. This... Right. Okay. Is there like um, exterior lights that we can toggle? 
Hmm. Sometimes. So you saw a lot of other, like, again, switches and gauges and gears yeah. and things back towards, you know, where the science equipment was when you were searching around in the cabinets and things. Um, not a lot, but there were switches and stuff over there if you want to go take a look. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you, there's a bunch of switches lined up along the wall. They look like light switches. Um, <laughs> none of them are blinking, uh, right? None of them are blinking. <laughs> uh, They're just regular old like wall yeah, switches. Yeah, just going to flip some switches Start see flipping. if there's any exterior lights that might shine up the light, the water a bit more. Cool. Uh, so oh. the first three start to sort of uh, light up, you know, again, this one area that you're in here, another one does the observation room, another one you don't see anything happen, but yes, the one all the way far at the right, as you flip it, you think you just see the light change outside a little bit, as if maybe underneath the habitat, there are lights that are sort of lighting up the floor just outside. Okay, uh, Robin's gonna go and, and take a second look at what is mm -hmm. new to see and she's also kind of like eyeing that shadowy area yeah off in the distance so you come back out over to the observation room and kind of look below and indeed it's well lit along the the ocean floor below and you guys are only maybe three feet above it it's not you know you're not nestled in the sand but you're about three feet raised up on these um you know columns um you can see you seem to have scared off some of the wildlife when the lights went on but slowly they're kind of mm -hmm. coming back and you can definitely see along some of these columns uh where there are growths and barnacles and things that these are places where the fish come to eat and pick it you know the uh the un underwater moss and things that are growing there um as you make your way over towards that shadowy area you do notice that it has not moved so the same shadow pattern that you saw you know 20 minutes ago is still there but now it is starting to get quite a bit darker you know we're talking four or five in the afternoon and it's the sun is basically gone now um as well yeah. as a storm coming in um so it's quite dark off in that direction uh would you like to give me a perception check yeah uh can you roll it please i have a Got plus it. two looking at it and from your experience it strongly resembles the prow of a ship a ghostly silhouette in the distance deep beneath the water silas mm -hmm. <laughs> have you ever wanted to be a pirate well i mean i'm more of a land thief but, <laughs> um, oh my god it is definitely that. somewhere that i can stretch stretch my legs a little bit <laughs> stretch my sea legs as it were. <laughs> because i did steal a ship a little bit earlier like it was just like an hour ago stole a ship <laughs> So I think that that is a good Still start a toward my career as a pirate. So it so is, it's, it's something I have put a lot of thought into. You know, I was going to say that the once again, the laws here might be completely different, but no, we did steal a ship, didn't we? We are pirates. Oh, don't remind me. Our I scored up all the law. <laughs> <laughs> Shiver me timber. <laughs> Avast. Well, I was just going to say, you know, uh, as as if you ever dreamed of being a pirate, and now might be a chance because uh, there's the ship, a shipwreck. Well, I mean, I think that we just established that we are pirates now, so it's not becoming <laughs> a pirate, it's becoming legendary pirates. Well, in that case, as pirates, we have a mission to go to that ship. Oh, is that the the wreck of the Polaris? The Polaris? Polaris. Mm -hmm. And I'll come on over and kind of not press my face <laughs> against the glass, but get as close as possible without leaving smudge marks and yes. see what I yeah, can see. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really dark. You want to give me a perception check as well? Uh, sure. I will also ask you, please, okay. uh, that is a plus six. Oof. Okay. Something about your vision, you're just adjusting much faster as the, you know, the darkness comes down and you actually shield yourself from the light that Robin turned on so that that doesn't affect your, your vision. And you can get quite a bit more off in there and start to make out more details. Um, this is a pretty heavy duty ship out there um it doesn't have masts it's not a not a sailing ship it was probably again steam or coal run um mm -hmm. back in the day uh it looks pretty intact to you um you remember the signpost saying something about the cold waters frigid waters helping to kind of um 
preserve it uh, within this environment. Um, it is a good ways off. You're talking like 80 to 100 feet away from where you are right now. Um, uh, but it is sort of clear, open ocean to get over there. I'll be saying all of that as I'm kind of pointing out everything to everybody mm -hmm. and go, I wonder if there's any notes we can find. I mean, you'd figure the scientists down here have gone and looked at the wreck, right? They, yeah, they, they... they wouldn't have come down here and just been like, ooh, plankton, and let's ignore that <laughs> oh, really yeah. cool boat over there, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably reefy by now, right? Well, it looked like, like it was, it. It was pretty, it looks pretty intact and it looks like a clear shot. It's just kind of far away. How old does it actually look? Like, uh, this is Adam Moore asking, like, does mm. it look like uh, super, super, super old? It or? said, hold on, we had a date. Yeah, 38, I was going to say, I think that's right. Okay. Uh, 38 is when it sunk. Um, oh, okay. So, long I time mean, ago. I wonder, I, I wonder if, you know how when we were riding on a train back before we actually, you know, operated the train, we were just riding on it and it yeah. just crashed because now we're in another dimension or something? I wonder if that happened to the ship. Maybe somebody was on the ship, something yeah. weird happened, and then ship wrecks. And then, you know, the crew is just gone all of a sudden. Maybe. I mean, if I remember the information up top, mm -hmm. they were coming to help with a stranded train, and then the ship caught fire. But mm -hmm. they there picked was up no... a package from the train. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was no details about how or why or what just the did it caught fire listen i'm just telling you all that you know first of all i'm not a hundred percent this isn't all just a dream like it could be okay i'm just saying that no one has ever thought that something was a dream or wasn't a dream that was a dream you know all, all that confusing stuff so it could still be a dream but if this was like a video game and i was playing and i didn't have access to the wiki for all this yeah. stuff there yeah. is no way that i could solo this thing I'm just saying that I'm very grateful that you all remember that because I didn't remember any of what you just said <laughs> about this boat. Well, I was kind of excited, so I was reading over everything. Um, but but they picked up a package from the train, and then that sunk. It's the mirror shard. I that yeah. was kind of my gut instinct, or it's a clue, or it's something. I think I think Miss Robin's going to have to teach us to scuba. Could be a thermosol shaving cream can with the geodes for the dinosaur <laughs> that they're trying to smuggle out. Either way, it's all important stuff that we should get to. Is Robin well, <laughs> and that was going to be my question. How hard is it to learn how to scuba? How well, I mean. Oh, it's easy. You can pay like a hundred bucks and get certified, right? <laughs> you just get a little <laughs> side eye. <laughs> You know what? You guys picked up climbing so easily. This will be nothing. <laughs> Do we want to wait for the storm to pass simply because, I don't know, do you see all the, the currents going on out there? It's, I don't know if the first time I do the scuba thing, I really want to be fighting lots of storm currents. I don't know if any of that made sense. Ms. Robin, did any of that make sense? Perfect. Perfect. getting real dark out there too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll offer currents <laughs> and really no light. There's no reason why we can't <laughs> beyond just your habitat. Yes. Enjoy a little break, you know. Just find a bunk, tell some ghost stories, and yeah, fall asleep. This Robin ghost stories, really. And then stay really? up and <laughs> look for for <laughs> giant octopus story. and talosauruses. There you go. To be renamed Salasaurus. We'll just <laughs> we'll just bunker down. Does anyone have any good stories? So have wow. we actually covered the entirety of this area now yes. though at this point? You you have you have seen everything there is to see. Like I said, this is it's a small space. Um there are not a lot of other there's basically this observatory at the one end, there's a living quarters in the middle, and then there is the wet porch with the moon pool to exit um or re enter the diver's gondola. Hmm. Is the the 
bathosphere, the glass sphere that we're in, is that have at least a little bit more room so like Feruza can stand up straight yes. and we can, okay. There's a step down. It's like, it's not huge, but yeah, it's definitely a, a much sort of larger area. Okay. Uh, well, the other thing we could do is learn from Miss Robin how to do the scuba thing. I, I don't know about you, but my gut says that this is going to take a while. I so she think can start our classes now, could, I mean? Yeah. Could Robin okay. mm -hmm. go up and grab one of the packs of scuba gear, bring it down, and she can start, like, teaching yeah. everybody what's From what. the wet porch? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, Robin, you go by. You see that there are six suits. Um, there are... Um, what are known as aluminum 80, which are sort of the most common oxygen tanks that you can get. Uh, you have, oh, I wrote it down. Yes, you have 10 of those. Um, you are aware that 80 cubic foot tanks last anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes. Um, and it also will depend, you can bring them back and start sharing some of this information with the rest of them if you'd like. Um, you know that that depends one, on the person, right? Someone who is bigger and with larger lungs is going to require more oxygen. Someone who's exerting themselves more is going to require more oxygen. Someone who's panicking is going to you know, require more oxygen. Um, at the, you know, the lower you go, the more pressure from the air, you're going to need more of the oxygen. Um, but that the way that this habitat is set up, you won't have to do any kind of pressurizing as long as you stay basically within this same depth you will not need to decompress or pressurize uh, while you're using, which is the most dangerous part of yeah. the scuba diving. <laughs> um, you know that going up in your scuba gear is going to require a tremendously careful depressurization um, mm -hmm. that's slow stages. So there is no escaping to the surface from this this depth. Right. So, yeah, if, if you allow it, Robin will bring in just an example pack mm -hmm. of everything. And she says, okay. What does scuba stand for? Self-contained <laughs> underwater breathing apparatus. Okay, step two. What are the bends? Let's talk about <laughs> She's just like, <laughs> it's like a time montage. Wow, it's like this. <laughs> oh, no. I, I like that you immediately went for the scary stuff. Oh, I yeah. That, that yeah. Is yeah. yeah. The bends are scary. You definitely, yeah. yeah. Decompression sickness is called the bends because it causes mm -hmm. you, your joints, are so painful that you bend over to try mm -hmm. and hold the pain. Um, it is, yeah, it is pretty terrible. Essentially, your the the oxygen in your blood uh, bubbles up, makes little air bubbles, and if that gets caught in your brain, that's a stroke. If it gets Why caught, are we doing this? <laughs> so hard. Mirror shards. We all have to go. <laughs> Just like... Well, okay. while Miss Robin is yeah. giving us our instruction, can. I don't know if I'm thinking about the information that I read about marine life in the book. I don't know mm. if it's my experience as a seal. Do I think I could just be a seal and be okay? Or is this too low for that? Is this too low in the, the depths of the ocean? Nature check <clears throat> with advantage. Okay. I wonder. Uh, actually, would you roll it, please? <laughs> I have it. a plus three <laughs> to nature. <laughs> You think you would be fine. That oh. most of these creatures that you are researching and, and that you can turn into go way deeper than 68 feet. Um, <clears throat> and that they have natural processes that allow them to decompress and deal with the mm -hmm. pressure um, that really, with very little thought, uh, your, your animal body <laughs> would be mm -hmm. able to handle it. Um, so yes, you do think you'd be fine. I, I want to still pay really close attention and learn how to scuba and try to absorb all of that information. But I'll, at the end of Robin's first lesson, I'll say, you know, if we're worried about how much oxygen we have, mm -hmm. I, I can turn into a seal again. And Man, I wish I could turn into a seal or like a polar bear. Okay, so wait, the last this time so we did easier. this, it was a rat, and you were upset because you said that you didn't really want to turn into a rat, but you want to turn into a seal. So try it now. Try to do the, the changing now. Just picture uh, just, a seal. I, I don't want to turn into a seal in the middle of like the, the dry place here. Like it seems like that would be <laughs> kind of a waste of, of magical energy. Because one thing I'm figuring out is like once I use some of this energy, I like mm -hmm. get tired eventually. And yeah. then I have to like, you know, 
nap or, or something to make it like, you know, come back. It's almost like filling a tank or something. So, I mean, yeah. I guess before I slip into one, you know, even if one of these wetsuit things are going to fit me, yeah. uh, before I slip into one of those, I'm definitely going to try the seal approach. But I don't <laughs> know. I haven't been able to really turn into be... anything yet. Yeah, because then we can really, if we can all turn into seals, then we can really be seal team five. <laughs> um, so yeah, so as sealed for safety. That's right. safety seals, absolutely. Safety seals. Yeah. Um, Robin, you know, she's going over all the different components. There's the wetsuit with a weight belt because, as you know, you are buoyant and you don't want to just fly right up to the surface. Oh. Uh, there's the tank. Um, there's a regulator which you put in your mouth, um, and know. then there's your. Um, your pressure gauge and your dive computer. So the computer is going to keep track. It's going to tell you how much time you have left, how much air you have left. Um, so this is all good safety equipment to have. It is all sort of your your average, but really well maintained. Uh, the last thing that Robin shares with you from her knowledge about scuba diving is that the very first thing you do when you get back is rinse everything off, right? Salt water is corrosive. So you want to rinse all of your equipment, your body. You don't want to bring anything salt water into the rest of the habitat. That would really be bad. Um, I, 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 okay, I need a little more detail about that. <laughs> like what's so, like I get out of the ocean and walk through stupid sand and like some of that definitely comes back into my hotel room sometimes. So what's so bad yeah. about that, Miss Robin? <laughs> <laughs> You've never lived up north where they had to salt the roads, have you? No. <laughs> mm. And you're not risking corroding instruments there. Yeah. Uh, my guitar's always fine when I'm in my hotel room. Um, that too. I'm going to offer Robin, as you are teaching and you're gazing at the walls, you notice a particularly interesting, on like a bulletin board where it says like, you know, you see North Carolina, you know, uh, drum circle at 4 p.m., you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the book board for the students. You see uh, this one piece of paper that's been sort of, you know, pin push pinned into that bulletin board uh, that just kind of makes you smile and you rush over to get it. Josh, can we share that piece of paper? <gasps> Robin's gonna tell you all about it. Let's see it. <laughs> I sprung it on you a little bit. <laughs> well, Miss Robin is bringing right. it over. Oh. This... Oh. We have it in chat. I believe yeah. it should be available for everyone to see at home. Um, so yes, you find pinned up a sign that says helpful hand signals. Uh, this is clearly some one of the students' study guides that they have posted up here. Um, and it does share some of the information that you know, because of course, once you are diving and have a regulator in your mouth, you cannot speak to one another. So these are helpful hand signals for when you oh are. Oh my gosh. It's good. Oh, let's see. Come. <laughs> and we, we can make a game out of it, everybody. When you need to slow down, you go down. Okay. When you need to go up, you say thumbs up. All right. <laughs> She's like, going to start like Danger. <laughs> Robin's sharing all that she knows. She's she's able to teach you all of the different signs. Um, mm -hmm. This person clearly has kind of their own take on it as well. Um, so yeah. they let you know that the A-OK -okay is what tells you to say that you are A-OK. -okay. The so-so sign is that you are not OK. Thumbs up is up. Thumbs down is down. Come is this fabulous you know, who, who does that uh, in the matrix? Uh, <laughs> slow down is pushing down. Stop is stop in the name of love. Uh, and then you make a fist. Uh, watch is I've got my eyes on you. When you point, do it with your whole hand because this is really hard to see. Like the, in the stage. Water. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Uh, if you have a leak, make a cup like this. If you're low on air, you put your fist to your chest. If you're out of air, you slash across your throat. And if you're in danger, you do the, the Jolly Roger. Uh, this person also had kind of a, a doodling thing and a, and a quiz on Thursday. So. And there is a giant octopus <laughs> on this. Oh, that's so cute. Doodle yep. the giant octopus. Oh, and oh and a, a, a UFO. I don't see a Taylor Swift, though. As well. And then you. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I don't think the students would would get a bunch of the Talosaurus. That seemed to be something that the scientists were really intent Wait, on. There was a UFO? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's where the Talosaurus came from. Maybe it's we are going to end up in space. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Silas, in that ship over there is another ship. <gasps> I don't know if I'm prepared <laughs> for all this. <laughs> Silas is having a moment of doubt. Oh, gosh. Well, I guess we're going scuba diving. I feel like we're experts Tomorrow. now. Sounds like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gotten quite dark outside now. Um, you can no longer really see the kelp forest. It's, you know, kind of disappeared into the night. Um, looking at some of the gauges that are telling you what the surface conditions are like, you're seeing 20 foot waves. You're seeing 40 mile per hour winds. This storm mm -hmm. is closing in fast. Uh, down here, there's very little evidence of that. You don't really feel it too much. Yes, sometimes currents and schools of fish will sort of go by in an interesting way, but you know, you feel quite uh, removed from it all, knowing that there is just chaos 60 feet above you. <clears throat> um, as things start to get much darker, uh, do you still have the lights on outside and inside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's like a warm little cave here where you're sort of huddled up looking out at the darkness. Um, who here has the highest passive perception? I looked that up once. My guess um, is maybe Neb. I've got 16. 16? Does that feel yeah, right, Tarby? It's me. Yeah. Okay. Neb, also, you know, with this adjustment, you know, you've kind of learned to sort of shield the light that's coming. You see a glow kind of off in the darkness. In the direction of the ship or in the direction of the kelp? Out in the open ocean. Is anyone else seeing that? Seeing what? Okay, so the last time I looked out through glass <laughs> and saw something glowing, it was those those little sprite yeah. things, and they they just wanted to cause us trouble. And I'm seeing a glow. I don't think I don't know if it's the same thing, but do you all see that? Uh, can we Robin see them? make some do sort of? It? Oh, it's the, yeah. the mosquitoes. Are they back? <laughs> Robin, water I, I labeled them sprices. Because ice sprites, sprices. <laughs> um, yeah, does Robin have any maybe intellect of maybe things that glow this at this depth? With the, that experience? Yeah. Um, go ahead and let's do an advantaged nature. Advantage nature. <clears throat> does it seem to be moving and swirling? It does. It's a advantage seventeen. Seventeen. It has kind of a pulse to it and a swirl. It seems to be very caught up in the different currents. Um, and as it gets closer and mixing more and starts to get nearer to you, it looks like little stars in this dark blue ocean surrounding you. You begin to see little pinpricks of glowing light. Robin, your eye is open wide and you say, that is bioluminescent phytoplankton. Yeah. <gasps> Fine, okay. Everyone, turn off the light. She's going to go and hit all the lights. Yeah. The light. yeah. In the darkness, it's like you're at the observatory, mm -hmm. right? At an old natural history museum surrounding you as the waves and the currents start to bring it in are just these beautiful, glowing pinpricks of light. It is as though you are in the middle of space, as if the stars mm -hmm. were just surrounding you from every angle. Um, Every once in a while, they wink out as you see a dark shape swing by and 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 eat it out of the 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 uh, the, the water there. This is definitely a, a feast for some of the the uh, the animals in the area. I thought that fighter plankton would be more dangerous than that. It's oh, gorgeous! No, they're harmless. Just why do they call them fighter plankton then? <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> Neb has walked this... up to the glass yeah. and has actually put a hand on it as she's looking out at this glow and she's just in wonder going, it, it, it's just like what I was hoping the stars would look like outside coming here. This is amazing. And you watch yes. as her skin starts to get translucent and turn 
blue and swirls of dark purple and green and um, other darker colors start to appear and little pinpricks of light all over her skin. Like she's just become something that looks much like what you're seeing outside in the oh. darkness, except a little bit more of the swirling colors. And she just continues to stare. You, you can't even see her hair mm. anymore. It's just her clothing and this very translucent body <laughs> as she's just fixated on outside. Far out. She learned something new, Neb. <laughs> Neb. Still Neb, right? You Are look you okay? radiant. <laughs> Your name suddenly makes so much more sense. Mm -hmm. I what? <gasps> oh, Nebula. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was just Neb, and I was like, "What does that mean?" But yeah, Nebula. Yes. That's. I I don't know what this is, but this is amazing. I want can I I can still touch things, right? And she's gonna <laughs> come up and start. Different? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel. <laughs> I'm a little too excited to know. I don't, it, it feels, it kind of feels the same tingly as when I think about turning into an animal. Hey, touch me, touch me. I'll <laughs> give you a high five. <laughs> I mean, it, it's pitch black down here. So it really is almost like Neb lit up, right? You could barely see her at all. Um, and it's almost like she's just become this sort of invisible star lit creature within this space you're like a blue lantern <laughs> do you mean that literally or is that one of your your comic book things oh no you just said comic book things <laughs> yes yes it's a comic book thing okay okay yeah. i'll take that as a compliment it's a, such a big compliment <laughs> okay okay i don't know what i can do with this but it's really neat a darker so just... shadow passes by yeah. the window blocking out some of the starlight you remember, you remember what we said earlier about phytoplankton and what likes it. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, oh, big octopus! And yeah. I'm going to run back up to the, I'm the not side one to of say, the glass. I, hey, listen, I'm not one to you know tell you to put your light under a bushel or whatever, but if that thing eats phytoplankton and you look like <laughs> phytoplankton, like... I mean, but there's this glass around us, right? Like, yeah. if if a giant octopus is going to be able you to get through this glass. remember the jar story that somebody said? Oh, well, yeah, it was but there's inside the weird. jar and it was unscrewing the lid. It's a bit different. Well, this yeah. probably has a <laughs> lid to it. Uh, okay, okay. And I'm going to hardcore look out and yeah. see if... This, can... this shadowy creature that's blocking out the stars disappears behind the two large silos um, off to the side of this habitat. Whatever it is. It's best we keep the lights off then. I mean, I don't know if I have a choice. <laughs> From so wait, Ned, you were just like thinking of you were just thinking about them and you turned into them this time? Or or you just were looking at them I was just without looking trying? At, I was just thinking about all the stars and like that was one of the main reasons that I, I said yes to coming on the train. I, I really wasn't that interested in going but then when when my mom said that i should to you know honor my great grandfather one of the other reasons was because it would be far enough outside of the city that i could actually see the stars without all of the light pollution in new york city and we haven't had a chance to do that yet but this is this is this is the same thing it's just inner space instead of outer space right yeah <laughs> and i was amazing. just i mean I don't know what I can do, but I, it's pretty. <laughs> it is. You know, I, you know, Silas, I never really thought about that. I never thought about Neb turning into creatures that could have predators. That never mm. crossed my mind. It didn't cross my mind until earlier today when I was a, a seal and <laughs> Silas kept talking about predators. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It also crossed, it's actually crossed my mind a couple of times, and then I, I have kind of ignored it. As you say that, you feel a on the ground 
oh, underneath no. you, beneath the habitat. Just two. Boom. Okay, listen. There's no way we feel that unless that's something big. Is there glass on the floor? Not in this area, no. Oh, okay. Do you think it's it comes low on the walls at the side, but the, the bottom is, is soft. Do you think now is a good time for me to tell you how strong octopuses are? I mean, I think you just did. To say, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and is it knocking? Does it want to come in? Can you talk to it? <laughs> well, I don't see it. I mean, we're assuming it's a, an octopus. I don't know if where, I can talk to it while I'm we, looking like this. Where did we feel the impact? Under the floor of this observatory area. Of the, is there a place that we could see? You can come over to the edge. You can't quite see underneath. The only place you can see underneath the habitat would be the moon pool. Um, but from here, you can get down low. You know, it basically like the the glass wall hits the floor. So you can see pretty low there, but not underneath. Uh, Robin, did you uh, reclose the airlock when you brought the scuba gear in? Absolutely. Okay. So the door to the uh, uh, wet porch is closed. Okay, so listen. Did it stop locking? Or is it I still don't locking? Mean, like. I, I just want one question that I wasn't paying close enough attention to during our training, Miss Robin. How long does it take to get suited up in all this gear? <laughs> oh, my. Well, if it's your first time, I'd say quite a long time. Silas, so, you want to so, go out and say hi to whatever that no, was? No, I'm just saying. Listen, I keep thinking about the lid on the jar, and I'm just saying <laughs> that. If we were in the gear, not the masks or whatever, but like if we were in the gear, possibly even sleep in it, that might make me feel a little bit better because, you know, if it just pops the lid off the jar and water is everywhere, then, you know, maybe we can at least have a chance. I, that's not a bad idea. I, I, I tend to agree, actually. <laughs> I've never slept in a wetsuit before, but uh, Silas, if it'll make you feel uh, better, I, I guess. It'll certainly cover more of this up. I wonder how long I'm going to stay like this. I, I As this is going on, Silas yeah. is like trying to trace like, and I am going to, you see, pointing a hand and then I'm creating an illusion outside of what I feel like, and I have no idea how this would actually look, but what uh -huh. Silas feels like is very interesting fighter plankton. <laughs> Um, so it's so, got like a little so sword not a lady. and shield, <laughs> sword and shield you know, all this stuff, but it is twirling around like the other fighter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, um, and it, it, it starts to, I've got about 120 feet with this. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going to keep, you know, concentrating and moving it like okay. away from the habitat. <laughs> so like a concentrated section of of this glowing dots and things and yes like, yeah. and, and like trying to make it bigger and like a bigger mass and okay. then i'm just seeing it i'm trying to move it as far away from us as we can actually go just to see if anything happens okay um you all sort of watch as this sort of glowing coalescing you know dense cloud of of lights uh sort of you know appears outside of the window and 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 silas is sort of <laughs> push <laughs> away with his magic to sort of fly away um and as you're all kind of really focused on this image you do think down at the bottom there is again this shadow and it's quite large now that you're seeing it but it seems to then get really small and then sort of open itself up again and then get really small. So it has a, an elastic kind of quality to it. Mm -hmm. um, but it yeah. does indeed seem to be attracted to this image that you have created. Oh my gosh, I think that's a giant octopus. <laughs> I think so too. Not going swimming. <laughs> it I don't know slowly how disappears this from sight. <laughs> out into oh. the open ocean but silas bring your bring your fake phyto stuff closer <laughs> why can... well don't you want to get a really good look at it no i don't want it cracking the lid off the jar <laughs> you, you assume that it wants to attack us when it probably just wants to go after food yeah but it might be mad when it fi finds out that it's fake food 
well, you know what? I'll talk to it and I'll apologize. That's that's an idea. No, now, is, is, is everybody on board with this idea? Because I mean, I kind of like it. I'm a little scared about it, but I'm kind of like it too. I mean, if Nip can find out what it wants, maybe we should start there. Yes. Okay. And then you see eat. fighter plankton, like, <laughs> you know, start like waving its little tendrily arms or something. I, I don't know. Um, and <laughs> yes, fighter our... plankton's a plant. Uh, <laughs> it's basically like algae in the yes. water. <laughs> but the algae starts waving. That look like that. Yes. yes the I marching love it. band. Like, yes, which, I love it. What the baleen whales band. are going at. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, you accidentally make the shape of a plane because you keep thinking about fighter planes. Yes. Yeah. Every once in a while, the lights wink, wink on in certain patterns. So I do kind of love the idea of like a swarm ranger that uses <laughs> phytoplankton. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is nice. Yeah, so it's coming closer back towards you again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna looking real close. It to like the, I'm trying to move it to the largest area uh -huh. that Neb mm -hmm. could see it very clearly. Okay, so kind of right in front that for that middle window right there. Um, you're watching again. You know, Neb. I imagine you really are. <laughs> yeah. At this point, at this yeah. point, I don't care about smudges. I'm just... looking as as mm -hmm. peering into this darkness as much as you can, and it really. I mean, it might as well be space. Why do you have? Jen has all the props. Tonight. Jen has everything. At my desk, which has way too many things on it. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> Um, pressed up against it, just looking in this silence, and they just can see nothing but the stars and Neb um, <laughs> in this area. When suddenly, in front of you, it goes completely dark as the entire window is covered in oh. darkness. Oh, I think With it's a little us a bit kiss. of light coming off of Neb. You can just see suckers the size of Neb's head stuck on the glass here. Um, down at the bottom, you hear a scratching. And Neb, as you look down and kind of bring your light, you can see the beak, the hard beak of this oh. octopus at the bottom. Silas so starts putting on the suit as fast as he can. <laughs> <At the bottom. laughs> I'm gonna squeeze it on. I'm gonna duck down near the beak yes. and I'm gonna try to talk with this giant octopus. So oh all, it, oh I'm God. all, I'm all colorful and starry and yes, everything, and I look right in its beak because I don't know where its <laughs> eyes are. I'm gonna go, hi. I don't know if you can understand me, hear me through the glass. <laughs> Let's hear oh the God. voice, Ned. Let's hear the voice. <laughs> Definitely think about what you're gonna say first. You're gonna piss it off. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, this is an air time. No oh God. I don't, I don't, Neb, you don't get the impression that it hears your voice. Okay. Um, but as you take a step, it seems to respond to the footfall. That's when it kind of moves its beak, <laughs> kind of clicking, clacking at the glass and the, the metal at the bottom as it sort of senses the movement, the, the hollow sound that you make as you touch the metal around you. Okay, but it's still it's responding to me as prey, not as someone who's mm. communicating. You don't get the anyone. feeling that it can hear you, no. Mm. I don't know the, if it can hear sound me. sound waves in the air are not penetrating through to the water. I guess I was hoping that there was going to be enough, like, wiggling of, I don't have enough tentacles. Maybe I need more tentacles <laughs> to talk to it. I don't know. I've never spoken octopus before, but I don't think it can hear me. I think we should all just not move a muscle. Okay. I will stay still. Stay um, still. Maeve is going to sh sort of just <laughs> slip into the shadows. Yes. And you want to do a stealth check? I would love to. Please do. <clears throat> uh, I can't math tonight. 22. I mean, it is pitch dark in here, so like you needed a five. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Just um, don't be near me. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you move as far away from Neb as possible. Um, <laughs> you, you get away from the windows where, if any of the bioluminescence is coming in from there, you, you know, the, the sort of pale Irish <laughs> complexion <laughs> you cover up with your hood or whatever you have. And, and yes, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be very difficult. And you also get very still knowing having seen that this thing kind of is sensing when you know you're touching and the sound that you make um you get almost motionless 
Silas has got like maybe one leg into the <laughs> no, at this no. point. Um, and without you have to food, disrobe to get into it. So if you haven't taken your clothes off, it, this is a, a, a circus happening. Yeah, so I got yeah. sneakers on. No one can yeah. see it anyways. Definitely. Um, it's like your reflective pants. But um, as this uh, is happening, I do raise my hand. Mm -hmm. And I try to reach out to the creature with my mind. Mm -hmm. And I am trying to detect its thoughts. Now, if it has an intelligence of three or lower, this I, I'm going to know that and I can't right. do it. If it has anything higher than a three. It I, makes a save. It, well, actually, oh. um, for this one, it's not going to make a save yet okay without a save i initially learned the surface thoughts of the creature what is most on its mind in that moment uh and then late i can keep concentrating and try to get more after that so basically i get surface thoughts for uh, for free great um you're mostly getting imagery right it's not as though you're hearing a voice or words in your head it's a feeling and images that start to wash over you. You feel your belly begin to grumble. You see images of fish and phytoplankton and and all kinds of other tasty nibbles. Do, do I see crushing glass? <laughs> or... Oh God! You do not see crushing glass, but okay. the overwhelming feeling is hunger. Okay, so I don't want to alarm anyone. But, but you're gonna say something alarming. Everybody I, who does that. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of sensing what feel like the thoughts of this creature, and it okay. is definitely hungry, and it's got its beak engaged with where we currently are. So it so it's definitely overwhelmingly hungry, and I am going to continue to try to concentrate. Okay. And um, it will get a save um, on. on you oh. know, after I take another action to do gotcha. to do this part, gotcha. And that's going to be a um, wisdom saving throw of um, sorry, fourteen. Okay. Well, Silas, can you talk to it in its mind? Because I I can't when I'm not outside. I guess I can't talk to it. Um, I don't think because I think I have to speak, possibly Octopa or something like that. Probably right. Uh, octa octa. Pokey, octopus, octopus, pokey, and octopus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Octorian. Ancient octopusian. Cephalopodian. Yes. There you yes. go. There you go. go. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, as this is, you know, you're reading its thoughts, uh, you can sense that it's, it's moving down again, sort of back mm. underneath the habitat, and all of a sudden, the legs are gone. Uh, you feel the kind of the shake of the entire habitat as it, Ooh. you know, rips its suckers off of the side of this thing. Uh, you see sediment and anything that had been growing on the outside of this begin to sort of seep into the water around again, just caught very faintly by this bioluminescence. Um, and it has again disappeared from your sight. I, I genuinely think that it is a bad idea for us to stay here, but I don't know how we're getting out of this thing. Cause if we start moving yeah. that thing back up to the ship, yeah, like we are sitting ducks. It's just gonna, it's gonna come after us, right? Well, not to mention the storm. We, we just gotta leave this large glass sphere and then it won't see us anymore. It'll just go after other plankton things right i mean yeah I, I, maybe i, I, I just I'll, need to I'll, get out of sight and neb will like put up her hood on her hoodie and try to uh -huh. like push her hands into her sweatshirt and be like I, I can try to just until i figure out how to make it go away look he's trying to eat phytoplankton that's fairly small i'm not sure that it could eat something on the scale of us yeah i i, I definitely agree with you there but like i'm afraid that it's strong enough to make a what do they call it like a breach or something and water yeah. comes in and kills us all that's what i'm more worried about well and if i gotta be in the water to talk to it but i don't think oh, i no. can do that as me let let's get out of here and i'll stop enticing it to come after me and hopefully that'll work 
it can just go on its merry way and we'll come up with another plan later. I was all excited to talk to it, but I didn't think about the glass. I, since I still have this um, magic going, yes. um, I have the ability on subsequent actions to detect um, whether there is a living creature, as long as it has that uh, intelligence or higher, uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. within 30 feet. Uh -huh. And so um, I'm not exactly sure how big this place is, but I, I do just want to kind of think you know under under us uh -huh. and try to reach out just to see if it is still there as we as we move out of sight into another room. is that the saving throw or is that an eight uh, that is not a uh, saving throw to just detect you absolutely sense it you think it's back at the moon pool <gasps> oh my gosh everyone i think it's at the moon pool i can still <gasps> feel it and i think it's oh! at the moon pool. We gotta get the scuba gear. What? 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 what no, no, no. We, we don't no. need the scuba gear. We just go to the moon pool because then I can. I don't need the glass. The glass is gone. Right? Listen, just and talking Neb to is... the thing doesn't mean it's going to not try to eat you. <laughs> and Neb is heading. Neb, more. you're literally glowing. <laughs> no. And you're going towards the no. moon pool oh, airlock. I would. Okay. I would so open the door and then You're go through and then stop okay. to like usher because. I think Neb would not just open all the doors. Okay. And she gotcha. she would. She's gonna rush forward, open the door, get into the main area, look back, and be like, "Well, come on." Uh, Neb, she, can you stop glowing? Maybe before you try to talk to it. Yeah. I'll think about it. I'll do my best. Why should she have to change? Because she looks like. I, I mean, I'm not gonna go talk Food. to a, a, a wolf and look like a steak. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. I'm gonna try my best, but for the moment, let's go, let's go, because if it's gonna stay there, this might be the opportunity to talk with it. I don't think well, this is a good idea. Well, if Deb's gonna go, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go with her to make sure she's okay. I don't know how to prove of this plan. I will, as, as they're talking, I will take a moment and center myself and, and okay, I, I felt like I changed into a different animal when I did this. Yeah. What do I okay. do when I get out of being an animal? And I'm gonna, concentrate on getting out of this starry form yeah and then you watch as it just kind of dissolves head first all the way down her body and the the pinkish skin comes back and, and the uh, blue is just in her hair again and she goes there we go there we go there we go not oh, food anymore let's go, let's go, let's if, go. if you haven't turned the light on they barely see basically you just go out uh, you just kind of disappear. Uh, it is mm. it is really very dark down here. Um, you guys are are feeling around to move just up into this area. Neb, you probably can see better than anyone else. Silas uh, lights up lights up his yeah. ring. Okay, um, lights up his ring. That green glow fills this area. As Silas, you do that. You look. You see the six portholes in the bunks around the side. that are now lit with your green light. Okay. Uh, Neb, you're can at the door. Can we see anything out of those portholes? You cannot, they are pitch black dark. You don't even see the bioluminescence over there. Oh my it God. looks like it's pretty much all just in front of you. Where is everyone, everyone else? I'm going with Neb. I'm going with Neb, yeah. And okay, Curry's so moving forward for, with Neb. So, so that spell that I just used yeah. is not concentration, mm -hmm. doesn't break the other thing okay. yet. Um, but I have a minute on that. Okay. So basically, I don't know how long this has been since I initially tried to, to do it, but with the last second, yes, last that, couple I'm seconds, I'm trying to confirm that it is still there. It is still there. Um, yes, you okay. definitely feel like it is at that moon pool still. All right, here's the plan. Okay. I'm not going to try to stop Neb from this very dangerous plan. Thank you. When we get there, everyone just grab your scuba gear and just have it so we can pull it back in when something inevitably goes wrong got it happy <laughs> neb is super excited and doesn't think anything's gonna go wrong lauren is gonna ask a very quick question yes um the time yeah, that we've neb. been down here exploring yes. and then Ooh. hanging out w would you say we got a short rest um <laughs> not if you didn't you know consciously do that okay 
then no, I would say no, you have not okay. had a short rest. Um, I want to know now, uh, is the door to the observer observation area been closed? That closed. airlock. Closed. All right. Yeah. So as all soon five as it of closes, you I'll start working on the other one. To are the, in a line. So we have Neb, Maeve, and Feruza, Robin, and Silas mm -hmm. lined up down the middle yeah. of this uh, central corridor. Uh, mm -hmm. Neb, as you hit the airlock button above and hear the as the seal is broken and swing it open, you look into this very dark, wet porch. Really, almost no light. Do I see, from before I enter, do I see anything in the moon pool moving? You, with your vision, look kind of peering in. You can just hear the lap of waves along the side of the mm. habitat. You know, it's underneath it, it, it rises up mm. and laps against the bottom of the grate. Um, give me a perception check. Uh, oh, plus God. six. I think you better plus do that. Six, I better roll yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. God. You don't see it. Um, it could be further down. It could be just around the side. I mean, Silas knew it was back here, but you don't. It's not poking its head out. Okay. I will enter cautiously, and I'm going to call out, Hi, are you here? <laughs> because my thing lasts for 10 minutes, so... Gotcha. I, I should still be able to talk with it you if, call if out it can in, hear me. In Seth, what did you call it? <laughs> yeah. You, you, you all hear it. Oh, I, yeah, I called that octopus in our chat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I wave my arms in a really weird way. In a really weird like way. I, okay. Like I need to have uh, six more of them. Um. Oh, yeah, octopus sign language is the coolest thing you can put in your fantasy games. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, boy. Okay, let me check something. Mm. I would apologize at this point for Neb wanting to talk to everything, but you know what? I'm so hey. excited for her. She's, she's learning lessons. She's learning lessons. She's learning oh, lessons. Oh, wow. she's, um, she's all the lessons. Flying out of the darkness, you feel a wet slap coming near you, Neb. Um, ooh, mm, you might be okay. That is an 11 to hit. No, it hits. It hits. <laughs> uh, it slaps. Uh, yeah. You feel this kind of, you know, suction along the side of your face and your neck. The rest of you only hear it. You're not seeing yeah. it. Neb, you with your vision can just see this sort of huge, muscled tentacle as it wraps around the back of your head. Um, you are going to take uh -uh. 11 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And you are grappled. Um, oh, God. And I would I would call out at that point, oh, yes. no, 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 you don't want to be pulling me in. That would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make a persuasion check, please? Oh, no. Sure. Nice. Oh, let's see. Okay, that's not so bad. 16. A 16. Mm. And you would yeah. all, I guess you would hear this? I don't know. I don't know. Do you, I mean, I'm not quite sure either. We have to figure out what the thing is. I mean, I think they're hearing something. You are mm -hmm. communicating. Uh, yeah. Whether they know exactly what you're saying, uh, I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, I mean, we're an initiative. Oh. I think we should just roll it before mm -hmm. I go much further. This is the oh. surprise it got. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and do. We only have a little bit. You know what? We'll, let's roll these initiatives. Let's roll this. Save them for next time. We'll save them for next time, but I, we'll, we'll wrap up okay. this little bit here. I love it. I just rolled a natural 20 on initiative. Oh, oh amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So good. <laughs> 17. Okay. I mean, it does give me a 19. It's not a, it's not a 20, but it was a natural 20. 17. Neb is a 19. 19. 17. Oh, um, Maeve is a 22. Wow. Neb, I was like, why do I have a two for Maeve? Silas? <laughs> Robin and Silas? Only a 10. 10 Nin for Silas. 19. And 19 for Robin. Wow. Um, wow. Neb and Robin, who's going to go first? Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm not okay. me <laughs> never <Nebby laughs> go first okay okay um so all of you hear this 
and the kind of Neb probably going, ah, or whatever it is, and then going, <laughs> whatever she does to say in octopus and in octopish, uh, <laughs> you don't want to grab me and then pull me in. That would be a bad idea. Um, yeah. Neb, you feel it. It doesn't pull you in, but this tentacle at the back seems to kind of start to snake around down over your shoulder as if it is trying to get a better grip. Uh, now, in the darkness, you and only you, with your vision, see the large body of this thing squeeze itself through the moon pool and more of its tentacles sliding out, getting a grip on all the sides, basically filling this space as it puts its arms up on the wall, getting a good grip. And with that, we will say good night until next uh, time. The children of Erte. Remember, <laughs> next week is on the Erte. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Ooh, not next so week. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. That's I'm how long it took to take to put on a scuba suit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two weeks. Uh, two weeks. Yeah. It take two weeks. I would, I would like to officially apologize to all of all of the awesome people that I'm playing with that I'm about to get us all killed to talk to a giant octopus. In a habitat. <laughs> A pressurized habitat under the water. Yeah, I love it. Garden. In the I love it. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> either either we're all gonna die or we're gonna have the best friend ever. One of those two things is gonna happen. Oh, you better pull a Penelope, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm doing my best. I'm nowhere near as persuasive or cute, but I'm trying uh, real I'm hard. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for being here with us today. And please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night, everyone. Uh, yeah.